Hi, my name is Sean Patel and I'm from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet to Grouper project. This is the admin track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about the subject API, and this is part three. So here are the topics that I'll be covering in this part. In part one, I gave an introduction to the subject API and talked about the various source adapters. In part two, I did a demo of the JNDI source adapter and talked about batching and paging. In this part, I'll talk about virtual attributes and internal attributes. This will lead into the topic of member sorting and searching, which I'll talk about in part four, among other things. So virtual attributes are attributes that are created within the uh, source adapter, possibly based on other attributes, and configured in the sources.xml file. Each virtual attribute has a parameter uh, in the configuration. The parameter has three parts. The first part is the string subject virtual attribute. The second part is an index for ordering in case one virtual attribute depends on another. And the third part is what you'd want to end up calling the attribute. Uh, this is the name of the attribute in the subject object. Each of these three parts are separated by underscores. Um, so that's the parameter name. The parameter value contains uh, the value of the attribute. The value of the attribute can use Java expression language um, which can give you a lot of flexibility as far as dynamically generating the value. You can use methods in the subject details class by referencing the alias subject details. Uh, you can also use your own class as well. So I'll show an example of how this works. Uh, say that I want to dynamically create an attribute that contains the name of a person followed by the person's net ID in parentheses. Uh, so here's how I would do that. Uh, the name of the attribute would be name and net ID in this example. The value contains the display name attribute of the subject followed by an open parentheses, followed by the UID attribute of the subject, followed by a close parentheses. So I'll show an example of actually modifying the sources.xml file with this now and showing how that ends up working. Uh, so first of all I'm going to copy this example. So here I have a, a sources.xml file that's already pre-configured based off of the demo that I did of the JNDI source adapter in part two of the subject API training. Um, here, based off of that sources.xml file, I'm going to insert this example. Now I'm going to start up GSH. And so this is already configured to talk to my LDAP server. I'm going to create a grouper session. Now I'm going to do a subject query. Now I'm going to get all attributes for the subject. And here you can see that the last attribute is name and net ID and it contains the format that I had mentioned um, with display name, open parentheses, net ID, close parentheses. So that was a demo of virtual attributes. So the next topic is internal attributes. Um, internal attributes allow attributes to be marked as internal. Uh, doing this prevents those attributes from being returned in some of the subject API methods. Uh, for instance, both the getAttributeValue and getAttributes methods will ignore internal attributes. This is useful if you're building attributes to build other attributes um, and don't want the first ones to be displayed in the UI, um, or if you're configuring member sorting and searching, which I'll talk about in Subject API Part 4. Um, so even though there are methods in the Subject API that ignore the internal attributes, there are overloaded methods that allow you to get them, and I've included two of them on the slides. So let me show you an example of how this works as well. Um, in this example, I'll set the name and net ID attribute as internal. So once again, I'm opening up the sources.xml file.
and I've added an internal attribute element. And the text of that attribute is the the text of the element is the attribute name and that ID. Now I'll start a GSH. Starting a root session again. Doing a subject query. And now if I run get attributes you won't see name and net ID anymore um, when I run get attribute. Although if I do get attribute with the parameter false, that would allow internal attributes to be returned and now you see name and net ID in there. So that was a demo of using internal attributes. So that's all for this tutorial. Uh, you can click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of the subject API. And here are some links you can visit with more information.